comments now on what I suspect is a growing amount of doubt among Americans that President Obama ever truly intended, as he put it, to, quote, degrade and ultimately defeat the Islamic State. After all, it's, it's been a few months now, six months. The president perhaps thought that those strong words would somehow lessen the bloodlust that arose throughout the country when the Islamic State terrorists beheaded two American journalists almost half a year later. The Islamic State has grown in number and dominion. The Islamic State to this point, whether our president accepts or comprehends it or not, has stalemated the world's only superpower. And that reality, which Mr. Obama won't accept seemingly, which is however well understood by those tens of thousands of Muslims who've been drawn to the evil vision of a caliphate and the promise of a global Sharia order. The savages revel in their butchery and our president still will not call them what they are, playing philosopher instead of president, cowering it seems behind sophistry, unwilling to accept that the Islamic State controls a third of Syria, a third of Iraq, and that our enemies are radical Islamists, and that they are now responsible for the deaths of four more innocent Americans. As today, the family of 26-year-old Kayla Mueller grieved, the president released a statement saying, quote, ISIL is a hateful and abhorrent terrorist group whose actions stand in stark contrast to the spirit of people like Kayla. On this day, we take comfort in the fact that the future belongs not to those who destroy but rather to the irrepressible force of human goodness that Kayla Mueller shall forever represent. <sighs> President Obama conveyed much the same sentiment two and a half years ago in the aftermath of Benghazi and the deaths of four other Americans, even as he denied then radical Islamist terrorists had murdered them. Again, President Obama talked about the future and who it must not belong to. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. But to be credible, those who condemn that slander must also condemn the hate we see in the images of Jesus Christ that are desecrated, or churches that are destroyed, or the Holocaust that is denied. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet. Those are not careless or accidental words by this president. They've given rise, however, to deep concerns among Americans. Some Americans believe the president is no part warrior and an unreliable leader who has created distrust of his ability and his values at home and abroad. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee says outright that he doesn't believe Christians and Jews can rely on this president. Everything he does is against what Christians stand for, and he's against uh, the Jews in Israel. Uh, the one group of people that can know they have his undying, unfailing support would be the Muslim community. And it doesn't matter whether it's the radical Muslim community or the more moderate Muslim community. And U.S. retired Navy Admiral James Lyons today questioned Mr. Obama's values and interests as well, writing in a Washington Times op-ed, quote, their strategy by now should be clear to all thinking Americans. It is embedded in the Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett strategy to transform America. It is an anti-American and anti-Western, but a pro-Islam, pro-Iran, and pro-Muslim Brotherhood strategy. His critics mount, as do doubts about his leadership. All as President Obama goes to Congress to ask for new war powers. Before generally reflecting to Mr. Obama, I hope that Congress will ask why a president would need greater authority for military force that he apparently doesn't intend to use to defeat an enemy he won't name and whose threat he believes is overstated. A complex fellow, our president.